uh, okay, let's start it again. So yeah, I was going to talk about the yeah, Caesar. I think uh, uh, my colleague Dr. Eman has uh, covered part of it. Uh, how to apply the Caesar timeline and how to gather the evidence and some tips. So as I said, I uh, was saying, so it's a CSER stands for Certificate of Eligibility for Specialist Registration. Um, it is uh, the route which uh, allow doctors uh, who have not followed the UK training uh, to uh, become a consultants. Um, it is assessed against the standards of the uh, UK um, CCT curriculum. Uh, it is an evidence-based uh, application. It is not uh, a comp it's not assessment of the competency of what you are currently doing in your role, and it's not based on recommendations from your colleague. Uh, so to be eligible from the um, uh, from the application point of view, from the GMC point of view, you need to have at least six months uh, continuous training in your specialty, uh, or you have a, a specialist medical qualification in um, in uh, the specialty you are uh, you are applying it. Uh, as you can see, the number of CSER applications have grown over uh, the years, and in 2020, uh, we're approaching almost 1,000 applicants. Um, so the, the blue one is the CSER in uh, uh, GP, which uh, uh, we're not uh, uh, discussing at the moment. So uh, we're so just talking about the CSER uh, certificate of uh, specialist registration, not the, the, the GP one. Uh, again, uh, this is another uh, slide of the um, application by specialties. As we can see, um, medical and surgical specialties uh, between themselves was more than 50%, and then um, followed by um, anesthetics, ops and gynae, uh, pediatrics and radiology, and then a small number of psychiatry, uh, uh, emergency medicine, and uh, ophthalmology, uh, as we can see. Uh, how do you apply? Uh, application is made online. We have a GMC. You need to register with the GMC, and then uh, you have an um, an online page which you can um, apply on it. Uh, as I said, it's an uh, you need to upload all your evidence electronically. Once you started an application, you have to submit it within 12 months. What happens if you uh, bypass the 12 months? You can ask for an extension uh, if you have a valid reason for that. Otherwise. Um, uh, it's uh, after 12 months this application will be closed uh, you can open a new application however you will lose all the documents that you have uploaded uh, on that application so you have to start um, uh, again from uh, from the beginning so before you open an application you need to make sure that you are going to finish it within 12 months uh, and the fees as mentioned here it's um, down that it's 1676 pounds um, so I'm just going to talk about the CV, how to prepare your CV. Uh, so there is a special format for the CV when you apply for CSER. The details of that is on the GMC website. I'm not going to go into the details, but you have to, uh, there's, a, there's a nice guidance on how to uh, write your CV uh, on the GMC website. Uh, but essentially, all the information must match uh, your application. Uh, the employment history need to start with the most recent and work backwards. Um, any gaps uh, uh, in your employment, you should include it in the CV if it's more than 28 days. If it's less than, 20, than 28 days, um, you don't have to. Uh, but anything over 28 days, you need, to, uh, you need to include it. You need to put your awards, research experience, any presentations or publications you have done. Hold it, as uh, Dr. Emmanuel was mentioning, um, any CPDs over the last five years, teaching and training experience, uh, management, uh, procedures, any extra activity that you have been doing. Uh, as I said, before you start your application, you need to read the uh, specialty specific guidance. For each specialty, there is a, there is a, there is a guidance uh, for, for that specialty. Um, uh, and it's better to avoid um, du duplicating your evidence. Uh, make sure that you know, the evidence you're putting is relevant. Uh, and bear in mind that uh, the CSER application is typically between 800 to 1200 pages, um, roughly. Uh, and again, as Iman uh, uh, mentioned earlier, so we need to make sure that all the evidence is uh, anonymized. There is no patient details on it. Uh, next is the, uh, as I said, uh, electronic evidence um, uh, should be uploaded in the application. So uh, you, um, 
you upload everything on the on, on the GMC uh, uh, website uh, on your application. Um, it's open for twelve months, uh, and you get you get an advice from your um, on your application via the G GMC online uh, as well. Uh, so this is how it looks like. Uh, so it's uh, domains when you once you open the application, uh, it will tell you exactly what you need to upload. Uh, for example, um, uh, I tell you how much this. For example, this is your CV. I tell you um, it, the number of your pages. You need to um, start with your um, uh, surname, initial, uh, all that stuff. And then here uh, it will say if you need if you have added any documents, uh, you can. You can edit it, you can delete it, you can add uh, other documents. So, so this is how the application looks like uh, online. Uh, in terms of the timeline, so once you uh, you submit your application, it takes about five days before we uh, before the GMC starts the initial assessment or the first assessment, which they're doing eligibility check. They check the structured reports you have submitted. They contact the the verifiers um, and you need to submit a hard copy within 14 days. However, uh, with the recent uh, COVID situation, the hard copy submission has been suspended. So it's all done online uh, at the moment. Uh, following that, uh, uh, you will have uh, 30 days uh, and then uh, the applic your application will be um, assigned to one of the reviewers from the GMC, you will have a specific reviewer who will be with you throughout your application. Um, he will send you an email with the initial uh, checklist. Um, so this checklist will tell you exactly uh, what that he has received the documents and has gone through them and uh, what you need to do uh, next. Um, following this initial checklist, you will have 60 days to gather additional evidence. Uh, depending on what he, uh, what the details of this email, uh, when he emailed you, whether the, you you need to submit more evidence uh, or you need to do anything else, so we'll have 60 days to gather that evidence. Um, following that, then the the, the application advisor will uh, issue a, a final uh, will do a final review and uh, let let you uh, let you know. Um, so this is again, uh, this is how it will look like. So uh, uh, your application will be assessed against the four main uh, domains of the GMC, which is knowledge. Uh, domain one is the knowledge skills, and the second domain is the safety, uh, and the third domain is the uh, com communication uh, and uh, um, partnership and teamwork. Um, and stage three, uh, once. Um, uh, the application is is closed after the sixty days. Um, the, the what happens is that they will send this application to the Royal College uh, or the faculty, depending on uh, whether it's the faculty of ophthalmology, gynecology, uh, medicine, or whatever you are applying uh, to. Um, uh, and then the GMC will do um, a quality uh, assessment uh, of the evaluation of the of the college. So the college will look into the application and then they will uh, send their um, uh, decision to the GMC. The GMC will have a look at that evaluation and then the GMC will then issue you a decision based on the uh, Royal College uh, recommendation. So uh, once the uh, application is received by the college, they will have 49 days uh, to, um, to, uh, to do the evaluation and then uh, at this point, they will send their assessment to the, back to the GMC, and then the GMC has up to 41 days before they can issue uh, a final decision. So, uh, as you can see, the whole process takes around seven months between you submitting the application and then hearing back from the from the uh, GMC at the end of, of your uh, application. Uh, so, this is in total, as I said, uh, if you see this. So this is once you submit your application, uh, then you have the initial assessment by the assessor of GMC, and then they, uh, they uh, after 14 days, theoretically, they will receive the paper evidence. And then 30 days, they will issue a checklist. You'll have 60 days to submit any other documents in the checklist. 
Um, once you're happy that you have submitted everything, they will close the application, send it to the college, and then uh, the college will do the evaluation and then send it back to the GMC, which will um, get back to you or send you the final uh, decision. Uh, how to gather the evidence? Uh, so as I said, the three broad areas to consider evidence, referees, and some administrative details. Um, essentially, any evidence more than five years will uh, will not be uh, assessed or have very less weight of assessment. Uh, and you cannot compensate for any uh, shortfalls in part of your evidence or training. Uh, in a particular area by providing uh, extra evidence in other areas. For example, if you are a surgeon doing uh, a particular type of surgery, you can't say, for example, I've done like two thousands of this operation, but you haven't done anything in, in other, uh, in other um, uh, sections. So you have to provide um, equal uh, evidence of all the um, uh, requirements for training in this particular specialty. Uh, so the domains, as I said, the, uh, the domains for the good medical practice, so you're being assessed against these. The, the main bulk of the assessment is on the knowledge, which is 75% of the application. Safety and quality is the second domain, 20%. Communication uh, is uh, uh, communication and maintaining trust are uh, both weight about 5% uh, of the evidence. So, uh, in the first domain, uh, you need to... Um, some the qualification assessments and or any assessments and appraisals, uh, the details of the posts and duties you had in the past five years, any research, publications, CPD, medical education, teaching and training, um, all that included in the first domain. Domain two is about safety and quality, so uh, participation in the audit service improvement. Uh, you need to make sure that you, uh, as Dr. Man was saying, you need to finish the audit cycle, you need to complete, so uh, the cycle, um, uh, uh, you need to close the cycle uh, the, of the, the audit loop. So you need to audit and then re-audit, uh, and then uh, uh, this is how to, to close the, the loop of the audit cycle. You need to show if you have got any complaint that you have responded to the complaints, any letters of appreciation uh, from either from your colleagues or uh, relatives or, of the patients, any patient feedback. Uh, any critical incidents, anything, this is included all in uh, second domain. Domain three is about, again, communication and teamwork partnerships. So uh, copies of any correspondence between yourself and your colleagues, um, any teaching feedback, course materials that uh, you have teached on or any presentation that you have done. Um, uh, and then uh, the partnership and team uh, and teamwork. So. If you are involved in any uh, MDT, which is multidisciplinary multi teams, um, for example, if you have a complex patient that needs involvement of different uh, team members, um, multi-source feedback form uh, is also very important. Any um, projects on, uh, with impact on the management uh, in, in, your, um, uh, in your department, uh, that's all included in the domain three. Uh, domain four, um, again, they need to um, uh, provide evidence that you are uh, acting with honesty and integrity. You have got good relations with the patient. Uh, and that, again, the way to do that is uh, by getting any patient feedback, um, any letters of appreciation. Um, uh, the same with your colleagues when they uh, send you any letters of, um, uh, of appreciation or um, any, uh, uh, any uh, emails between you discussing uh, a patient or showing that you have acted in, uh, in honesty and integrity in, in, in this particular um, case. It's sometimes difficult to gather uh, a lot of evidence in this section, but this is how to, uh, how to, how to get this kind of evidence. Referees, um, so you need to um, um, have between four and six referees uh, in your application. Um, so uh, they should uh, basically cover the last five years. Uh, it is recommended that you have two, uh, two consultants, uh, the equivalent in, in your equivalent uh, uh, spe <coughs> specialty you are applying in. 
The first referee usually is the current medical director or uh, equivalent. Uh, he doesn't have to, to be working with you, but uh, he will uh, be able to provide evidence about the outcome of, uh, of your department uh, uh, and able to, to uh, provide uh, this information to the GMC. Uh, so each one of these referees will need to uh, write a structured report um, uh, used to um, which uh, uh, will triangulate all your primary evidence. So they have to com they have to comment on your current and recent um, competence and breadth of your practice. Uh, uh, as I said, two referees must be working in your specialty. Um, and the primary free uh, will be your clinical director. So uh, before uh, deciding about the referees, you need to make sure that between yourself that um, uh, you decided about which consultant you're going to uh, ask for a referee. You need to let them know uh, that you are applying for the seizure and uh, it will involve them having a report and commenting on your um, level of work and. Uh, um, and, and uh, if they're happy to um, to do that. Um, then the last one is some administrative details, so some personal details. Uh, you need to provide your primary uh, medical qualification and specialist work qualification, uh, registration and license, uh, copy of your CV, your work history, and uh, your professional experience. Um, you need to provide details of the uh, verifiers in each um, hospital you have worked in. So uh, if you have worked in multiple hospitals or multiple trusts, so you need to identify one person in each trust who would be able to verify the documents that you are collecting from this trust. Um, and you need, to, uh, you need to let him know that uh, he will be contacted by the GMC to confirm the, the documents that you are submitting from this particular um, uh, trust or hospital. Uh, there is something called uh, authentic, authentic, authentication of the evidence. So uh, authentication essentially um, it's uh, only done for uh, any qualifications they obtained outside the UK. So your primary medical uh, qualification and uh, and um, specialist qualification need to be authenticated by solicitor or the awarding body. Essentially, stamping and signing a copy certifying that they have seen the original and this is a true uh, copy of the original document. Um, so, this is um, uh, so the sequence of, of events. So, the, uh, you need to identify a verifier in the institution, and then the verifier, uh, uh, you need to complete this pro forma, and then the, uh, the verifier uh, will check the, the evidence. Uh, and then following that, uh, you need to submit the pro forma with your uh, uh, application evidence. And then the GMC will contact this verifier to send him a sample of the documents that you have sent to the GMC just to confirm that this is a true sample of the documents uh, that you have gained in this particular trust. Instead of, in the past, they used to um, uh, sign and uh, stamp each uh, document from the hospital. So now you don't need to do that. You just need to identify, as I said, the one verifier and the GMC will send him a sample of the documents just to confirm uh, with, uh, with him. With the pro forma, you need to match the document's description with the title uh, of the documents you are uploading. So you need to make sure that the, the title is uh, uh, similar to the documents you are uploading. Um, you can do it in PDF, Excel, spreadsheets, any, any form you want. Uh, you need to put specific dates and numbers for the uh, pro forma. Uh, you don't need to provide more than one pro forma per, uh, or uh, more than one verifier for each hospital, only one verifier for uh, one hospital. Uh, just be clear, don't put any vague uh, description of the document, uh, and you need to be specific with the dates as well. Uh, Documents that don't need verification, your CV, your multi-source feedback, your CPD, uh, reflective diaries, uh, honors, um, testimonials, this doesn't need to be uh, verified. Um, so we have got uh, primary evidence and secondary evidence. So the primary evidence is your qualification, medical reports, logbooks, and training assessment. 
Your secondary evidence is the uh, uh, structural report from the referee, your multi-source feedback and the testimonials. Obviously, more uh, weight is, uh, is given to the primary uh, evidence than the secondary evidence, as you can see. Um, the success rate uh, for the Caesar is not, um, uh, is not high. However, it's getting better over the years. As you can see, started with um, 47% in 2014, and now it's up to 57% in the uh, last year. Uh, this is uh, uh, before COVID, so this is prior to COVID uh, data. But as I said, there is lots of um, unsuccessful uh, uh, applications uh, as well. Um, so, well, few reasons why you should be. We are running out of time. Sorry to interrupt you. Okay. How long do you think it will take? Uh, just two, uh, two, three minutes. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, just quickly, uh, either you have not uh, um, uh, passed the initial test of knowledge, lack of research, uh, any specific uh, lack in your uh, uh, in the area of the curriculum. Um, as I said, if you um, if you are successful, uh, you the the GMC will let you know. If you are unsuccessful, then you have two options: either to appeal or to um, re-submit. Uh, uh, given that you uh, you will have further evidence, so the GMC will tell you uh, what's exactly missing in your application, and they will advise you uh, what to do. Um, uh, as I said, so uh, if you are not successful, you either you need to appeal or uh, you have a, a review of your application and you must apply within 12 months and provide some evidence to meet this uh, new recommendation. Uh, the success rate of the reviewed application is pretty high. So 96% of people who have reapplied have got their teaser, which is, uh, which, is, uh, uh, which is quite encouraging. Uh, the just a few tips, so um, you need to verify and anonymize your evidence, submit uh, your evidence uh, of your eligibility, read your specialty guidance, gather the evidence prospectively, uh, make sure that your CV meets the guidance, don't duplicate the evidence, uh, carefully check your referees and listen to your advisors. Uh, just a quick summary, as I said, uh, Caesar is a that's going on the specialist register uh, to become a consultant in the UK. You have a better chance of a successful application if you are working in the UK. Uh, you need to try and match your training back home and fill in the gaps in your training. You need to be clear of what you need and choose your referee carefully. Don't apply too early and don't wait too long.